So this episode of Block by Block and Red Power is all about energy. We tapped into energy just a little bit last episode when we were discussing some of these powered blocks. But this episode, we are going to talk about power production and power transportation. So the first thing we should cover are the wires. Right now in Red Power, there are two obtainable wires. There's just the regular blue alloy wire and the 10 kilovolt wire. So basically the blue alloy wire, I'll just place a solar panel down, we'll cover that here in a bit, is what can connect to any of the basic machines currently. You'll notice that this big hunkin' 10 kilovolt wire doesn't even connect to this. Well basically a 10 kilovolt wire just carries more energy than the normal blue alloy wire will carry. And this blue alloy wire kind of acts like redstone, except um, instead of carrying a on and off pulse, it carries a certain amount of energy. So if I set this battery box down here, which is the form of storing energy in red power, you'll see that the energy is going to slowly go up. Now you'll see two bars in any type of thing that takes energy. This little battery bar and this little thunderbolt bar. Basically, this little battery bar is the extra energy that's built up. This has to get to a certain level before this thunder bar will start filling up. And this thunder bar is the usable energy. So basically, you have to fill up this little battery slot just enough to start putting energy into this thunder bar, at which point you can actually start using your machine. So you can see here this battery box is going to fill up and eventually it's just going to go into this bigger battery component which can just store more energy. Now on top of that we have these things called BT batteries. So really quickly, battery box, it's a couple BT batteries, some iron and blue alloy, blue alloy wire, three blue alloy ingots and three wool. 10K is just an extra piece of wool on blue alloy wire. We have these batteries, we can put these batteries in here and they will discharge into the battery box or we can put it in here and we can charge the battery from the battery box. So this is just kind of like portable energy. Now back to these wires here. So basically these 10 kilovolt wires don't have much use right now inside of red power. However, they do carry more energy at a time, so uh, if you just fancy carrying more energy at once, you can set up one of these voltage transformers and one end will take the 10 kilovolt wire. Now this is where the screwdriver I was talking about comes in handy because we can use this to go ahead and rotate this around to connect correctly. So one side will take the 10 kilovolt wire and then transform it back down into the blue alloy wire or vice versa. So the voltage transformer, some iron ingots, blue alloy, and some of those copper coils we talked about. So uh, right now, there's probably in the future going to be some machines that actually take advantage of the 10 kilovolt wire and require more energy at a time, but currently that isn't the case, so I really wouldn't worry about the 10 kilovolt wire that much, and I just stick with the normal blue alloy wire. Now, normally blue alloy wire is like redstone in the sense that it has to be connected to a block. But you can create these things called jacketed blue wire using various micro blocks, which again we'll cover in a future episode. And these jacketed wires are freestanding, they're like their own blocks, and you can just kind of do whatever with them. And they will also connect up with the normal blue alloy wire. So if I put blue alloy wire underneath it, you'll see that it actually connects to the ground there, so you see it's not connected. I put put a piece of blue alloy down and you can see that it goes downwards and connects to it and so now this blue alloy wire will carry electricity through this blue alloy wire that was jacketed in pumpkins because why not pumpkins so we've discussed transferring power storing power and how machines use power now we're going to talk about producing power so there's three different ways to produce power. There are solar panels, thermopiles, if I can get this grass out of the way, thermopiles, and kinetic generators. There we go. 
And so each one of these produces different amounts of power and in different ways. So for the solar panel, which is just some blue doped wafers around a blue alloy ingot, these are nickelite, which is a resource added to the game by Red Power, with a silicone wafer, which is you get by taking a silicon boule thingy, which is sand and coal, with a diamond handsaw. And diamond handsaws are part of microblocks, which we'll again talk about in the future. So that's how you get a red doped wafer. And so you get those, and that makes a solar panel, which outputs a modest amount of energy. But only during the day. And something to note about red power machines is they are all conductive. So if I put a big solar panel array like this, you'll notice that the power should be going up faster now. I do not have to connect a wire to each one of these individual solar panels. This solar panel, this solar panel will transfer power to this solar panel, to this solar panel, to this solar panel, and then to the wire. So I could even put another battery right here, and you'll notice it starts getting powered even though it's not directly connected to any wire. So the next one is the thermal pile. And the way this thermal pile works is off of temperature differentiation. I think I said that right. So basically, if I just get some blocks and either lava or water, if I'm going to use lava, I definitely shouldn't have wood. I'll take some cobble. And if I just kind of do this, and I put some lava around it, I can put a battery on top, and these really don't produce that much power. Let me see here. I think it actually produces more power with water than lava. Let me check that. You can see here by the battery that thermopiles hardly produce any power. Although they are fairly cheap, just four pieces of copper, two iron, blue alloy, and two blue docked wafers. It takes a ton of thermopiles to even start getting power. I would really not recommend thermopiles for anyone who is serious about red power energy. Because you can just see here, it's just not really producing anything. Now this last one is actually the most, the best energy producer, and it comes in two different flavors. It is called the kinetic generator. So we just have some iron, blue alloy, brass, and this blue electric motor, which is made like so. And it's basically just a windmill. So there's two different types of windmills, and I actually don't think there's enough room for this, so I'll go put this back here. There's the vertical windmill, which is this turbine here, which you can see is some wooden sails, and then some of these iron slab strips, which again are micro blocks. So I put this in here, and you'll see I get that big fancy turbine, and if I go get some of those wires back that I carelessly threw away, let's see here, there they are. You can go ahead and connect this up to a battery box and you'll see it starts producing energy very fast and is in fact the fastest form of producing energy in red power and like I said you can make that vertical one or you can make this one which is a very similar recipe and that one will be more of a traditional windmill um, I'm guessing there's not enough room for it let me try to go higher, give it some more room. Okay, let's see if this works. Yep, there we go. So there we go, that one is more of a traditional windmill. And again, you can just pull some power out of it. Also, you can shift click to attach things to machines just like you can in normal Minecraft now. So if I right click, I get the inventory. If I shift click, I place the block instead. So I'll go ahead and put my battery box down. And again, these are the best form of power production. They produce both day and night, and they produce the most power per block. However, they do have to be maintained because these windmills have a durability on them, and you will eventually have to replace them. Although, 
I think in terms of power generation, they look pretty neat. So that is it for this powerful episode of Block by Block and Red Power. I hope you guys enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next Block by Block and Red Power. Thanks, and I'll see you all soon. Toodles!